Welcome back. Well, it seems there's an additional name for every month of the year, Joe, and for just about every week to even the days. There's Dry July, September, November and more. And now you can add Red Feb to the list as well. So think February and think red. It's the colour that's most associated with heart and because heart disease remains our biggest killer, the timing of Red Feb couldn't be better. Which is why cardiologist Dr Andres Ellums is here. Thanks for coming in, Andres. Thanks so much, Luke and Joe, for the opportunity. Great to have you with us. There is something that is close to my heart, pun intended. I hear a lot of stories and no guys particularly, uh, men who have ignored the pains in their arm and their chest with not always the best outcome. What are the biggest assumptions you can make about a heart episode? Yeah, so it's really important point, Luke, that um, men just, they delay the, the recognition of symptoms that could be a heart attack. And with women, women experience different symptoms to men when it comes to heart attacks. So with Red Feb, we just want to make people aware that um, heart disease can present in many different ways, typically with chest pain, but can also present with shortness of breath, fatigue, sweating, those sort of things. So being aware of the symptoms of heart disease enables us to act more quickly and that leads to better outcomes in the longer term. So where does the story of the classic pain in the chest and the pain up the arm come from? Is that factual? It's true. So that's the classic description, but might only be 50% of patients describe a, a central chest discomfort, sometimes like a heavy pressure or a weight. And then sometimes you can get involvement down your left arm. So just the nerves that go to the heart and then refer pain, they go to the centre of the chest, sometimes down the arm and even sometimes up the neck into the jaw. So we've seen jaw pain, arm pain by itself, but classically all together, chest, arm, jaw pain. That's the classical description, but not always. And this is a, a common urban myth that this heart disease is mainly something that affects men. Is that in any way accurate? Men are a little affected a little bit more, but when women get affected, the outcomes are worse because women don't recognise the symptoms being heart related. Even when they come to hospital, we may not be as quick to take someone to the angiogram suite to open up a blocked artery. And we also know that medications aren't used in women as much as men after a heart event occurs when they're discharged from hospital. So I'm hearing that a lot of people delay calling an ambulance yes. and that can be a real problem too. Absolutely. So as part of Red Feb, we want people to be aware of the symptoms of heart disease. And so you can go online to heartresearch.com.au. There's a, a free pocket guide called Heart Smart, which will go through every symptom that you need to be aware of. There'll be some symptoms that are classic for heart disease. Some symptoms may be due to heart disease, but can be due to other things. But if you can be aware of the possible symptoms that are, that are there, and if there's no other explanation, you've got to call triple zero early. And don't feel like you're putting the ambulance out. If you've got symptoms, you need to respond. Absolutely. Surely. We've got plenty of patients who come into hospital. They get checked with some blood tests and an ECG, and then everything's fine. We send them home sometimes with another test, such as a stress test, and that gives us all some reassurance. We just don't want to hear about family members who have waited, something bad's happened at home, and then you can't go back and make that choice again. We all know a lot about living a healthy lifestyle and a balanced diet. Is there something that we're missing with heart disease? I think it's being proactive with your own health. You've got to take responsibility for your risk factors. If you don't get your heart, your blood pressure checked, if you don't get your cholesterol checked, if you don't stop smoking, how are you going to be able to do the things you need to prevent heart disease in the future? And you've got to think about your loved ones as well, not just yourself, but in the end, it's you that's driving the show. Is there an age at which we should be really on top of those sorts of tests and, and, and those checkups? It's a really good question, Joe. I think, first of all, you should look at your family history. If there's a lot of family members who have succumbed to early heart disease, we're talking about people having heart attacks in their 30s or 40s or strokes and that sort of age group, then you might need to see your GP a little bit early because sometimes you can get inherited risk factors for heart disease like high cholesterol or high blood pressure. But without putting a specific age on, I think once you hit adulthood, you need to start having a chat with your GP just about where your risk might be. The older you get, the higher the risk, of course. So otherwise healthy people who live, uh, you know, a, a good um, a routine of exercise, are they not at risk for, for heart disease or you should say everyone should be aware of it? I think everyone should be aware of it because one of the problems here with heart disease is you can have no symptoms whatsoever, have a sudden heart attack, which is a, a blocked artery that occurs within seconds, and then you can have a cardiac arrest and that can be game over. So the problem with heart disease and even the risk factors for heart disease like high blood pressure and high cholesterol, you don't necessarily feel any symptoms beforehand. And we've had patients who have been going to go overseas to do a, maybe the London Marathon or New York Marathon. They say, oh, just check my heart out first. And we end up referring them for heart surgery before they go. So the absence of symptoms shouldn't be reassuring when it comes to heart disease. The stats say it all, Joe. Every day, one in 20 people die from a heart attack. So the message cannot be clearer. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr Andres. We appreciate your time today.